Welcome back. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. A colorectal cancer awareness month is observed in March to highlight the importance uh, of screening for colorectal cancer as well as to promote healthy lifestyle habits that can decrease a person's risk of developing cancer of the colon, rectum, or the anus, uh, three distinct cancer types referred to collectively as colorectal cancer. The International Agency for Research on Cancer, the IARC, uh, estimates that the global burden of colorectal cancer will increase uh, by 56% between 2020 and 2040 to more than 3 million new cases per year. Now, the estimated increase in the number of deaths from the disease is even bigger or larger by 69% to about 1.6 million deaths worldwide in 2040. Very grim statistic, uh, I might add. Most of the increase is expected to occur in countries with a high human development index. Now, we would like to know what colon cancer is and how it can be be prevented and I'm glad to say we have joining us live from New York City in the United States of America to answer this all-important question and other questions the health expert dr. Neso Chi Okeke Bokwe um, and we're glad to have you dr. Okeke Bokwe good morning to you and thanks for joining us I take it that it's still morning uh, in your part of the world good morning uh, thank you for having me yes it is it's 3 a.m. over here but I'm happy and glad to be with you both Thanks for taking the time to wake up and uh, join us for this very important uh, subject. So, f so for those who are wondering, um, what exactly is colon cancer? And can you help us, uh, uh, um, you know, uh, explain the difference between colon cancer and colorectal cancer? So when we're talking about any cancer in general, you have to just understand that a cancer is um, an abnormal growth of tissue, basically, um, growth of cells that are just kind of going um, out of control um, that have been damaged. And these cells um, become damaged or changed due to what we call uh, DNA mutations. Just means that there's been a change to the DNA in some of the cells and then these cells just kind of grow out of control. When this occurs in the region of the body known as the colon or the rectum, we um, call it a colorectal cancer, meaning that you now have this abnormal proliferation of cells in this region of the body. So that's just the basic rudimentary, the fundamentals to kind of understand what um, a colon cancer is. Now these mutations or changes that can come about to some of the cells in the body, they can be inherited, meaning that it was something that was passed down in your um, family line, or it can just be acquired, meaning over the course of time, this can occur. The majority seem to be acquired over one's lifetime. Um, some of these changes that can lead to um, a colorectal cancer, but we're not sure why exactly this happens, but we do know that there are risk factors that contribute to having this happen. Okay, so, so let's talk about the risk uh, factors now that can cause it because, you know, you have mentioned the fact that it could be hereditary and so uh, there, might, oh, there might be some genetic factors to that uh, one. But what are the risk factors that can cause, you know, the colon cancer? So the various risk factors that can um, contribute to colon cancers um, include certain um, behaviors and lifestyle choices that one may uh, choose over the course of their life. So for instance, um, studies have shown us if you are somebody who is a smoker, that increases your risk dramatically for colon cancer. Um, if you are somebody that ad adheres to a certain kind of diet, um, certain dietary choices can contribute to it. So the food that you eat, it really does matter. So um, a diet that's high in processed foods um, red meats, those kinds of dietary habits can highly contribute as well to uh, colon cancer. If you are somebody who is obese or overweight, um, that excess weight on the body also contributes as well um, to the potential development of a colon cancer um, over time. So adhering to a healthy weight throughout the course of your life, being physically fit and active, that helps reduce your risk 
A sedentary lifestyle also um, increases one's risk of uh, colon cancer as well. So just maintaining overall healthy lifestyle choices and lifestyle changes um, over the course of your life will really help reduce your risk. And also something to note, those that drink um, a lot of alcohol, increased or excessive alcohol use can also um, increase one's risk for colon cancer through the course of your life. And of course, there are those other factors that um, you cannot control that increases your risk. So we just talked about some of the factors that you have some control over. Because you can change some of the things in your lifestyle, like diet, um, exercise, um, habit that you are a smoker, you can stop smoking. But the things that you can't control that would increase your risk, um, just being older. As everyone gets older, the risk of colon cancer increases. And we touched upon the hereditary component um, as well. So if you do have a family member, a first degree family member, meaning your mother, or your father, a sibling that has had um, colon cancer, colorectal cancer, that increases your um, risk as well. So key thing is you need to kind of be aware of what your risks are. You need to know what your family history is of um, colon cancer. And most certainly, you should always speak to your doctor to determine if you are at high risk, average risk, or low risk for a colorectal cancer. Quite interesting uh, and a lot to think about there. Uh, let's look at the signs and symptoms. I mean, what, what do people uh, need to look out for um, to be able to say, I need to get myself checked? And um, do we need to wait till we see these signs and symptoms? So first of all, tell us about the symptoms and signs. And of course, uh, later, you know, tell us whether people need to wait or, or they can go ahead and do some sort of screening before they even see these symptoms and signs. All right, so there are um, certain signs and symptoms that should lead one to head to their doctor right away. So a couple of things to keep in mind. If you are noticing that you are having um, blood in your stool or rectal bleeding, that is really um, a, a big sign that you need to get checked out right away. So rectal bleeding, blood in the stool, get checked out. If you have unintentional weight loss, basically you just notice that you've been um, losing weight without even trying, coupled with other gastrointestinal symptoms, that's a sign as well. So you might notice that you've been having consistent um, or uh, chronic um, epigastric or mid-abdominal pain that was not there before, and you're noticing that with the weight loss that you didn't intend to have, that is a, a sign as well. Um, basically, changes in your bowel habits from your baseline. So if you're someone who's had um, pretty much normal bowel habits, and all of a sudden you're noticing this change whereby you might have excessive bouts of um, diarrhea, excessive bouts of constipation, just a change from your normal bowel habits, you need to get checked out um, as well. If you notice the caliber of your stool is changed, meaning that you notice that now your stool is now uh, pencil thin. That's um, a sign as well that you need to get checked out. But with that said, some people who um, are found to have colon cancers, sometimes they don't even have any symptoms. So that's why um, we really hone in on getting screened. Screening is so key. So to answer the second part of your question, absolutely not. You should not be waiting until a symptom develops. What you should be doing is adhering to the guidelines, um, basically um, stating that at a certain point in your life, you need to initiate screening with what we call a colonoscopy, which is a procedure that looks um, and visualizes the colon to determine if there are any abnormalities like abnormal growths, like um, polyps, or any changes that look like they are precancerous or cancerous in nature. And the key is the timing of it all. When are we going to start having these screening colonoscopies? Um, in the past, it used to be um, that at the age of 50, we start these screening colonoscopies. But what their research has shown us is that more and more individuals are presenting with colon cancers at an earlier age. The incidence is on the rise uh, pretty much globally um, in the States, in the US, is, um, in the US and Nigeria as well. Um, we're seeing a lot more of these uh, colorectal cancers 
at a younger and younger age. So okay. therefore, the guidelines have changed. It's no longer at the age of 50 that we start the screening colonoscopy. We now start the screening colonoscopy at the age of 45. With that said, it might be a little bit different for certain people that have a family history. So let's say you're an individual who has um, a family history of a first degree relative, let's say mom, um, dad, or siblings who have a colon cancer, and let's say they were diagnosed at the age of 40. You want to be screened 10 years before the time that first degree family member was diagnosed. So if they were diagnosed at 40, your screening should be starting at the age of 30, because you're just at higher risk by virtue of having that first degree family member with um, a colorectal cancer. So all that to say, 45 for somebody who's at average risk. If you do have a family history, it really depends on the age at which that family member um, was diagnosed. If you are concerned about your risk, it's always great to just check in with your doctor because they can really just guide you in regards to um, what you need to be doing and at what stage you need to be getting screened for colorectal cancer. Interesting. Uh, uh, you, you talked about, and it's interesting. You also looked at talked about the age, and you're saying it's not no more for people, you know, 50 and above. It's affecting younger people. Uh, is there a, a, a sex specific as um, um, aspect to this? You know, does it is it more uh, prevalent in a particular sex, male or female? Uh, that's the first question. The second question I have for you is, um, I, I know someone who. Who had uh, um, uh, cancer, and based off of, of what you're saying, I think it was colon cancer. It's um, it's almost bringing tears to my eyes as you you're talking uh, because it was a painful loss. And but at the time they had to do a sort of a, a process, a procedure to cut some part of his intestines, I believe, uh, some tract in his body off, you know, so that they could stop the growth. But unfortunately, he lost the battle. Um, but at, at a point, um, he, he he began to there was a bit of um, a desire to take some sort of sand. You know, and uh, when we try to inquire why he, he felt like eating sand, um, it was said that um, he, he, he lacked some nutrients and we advised to put him on, on, on plantains. And I think the plantain has iron, if I'm not mistaken. Is there something about this related to, to colon cancer? Okay. So to um, answer your uh, initial question, um, to determine um, who we are seeing that will have colon cancers more, I think um, the key is not even looking at the difference in the genders that are having um, colon cancer, higher incidence, but um, race plays a big factor. And that's why I really want to um, discuss this topic because research is showing more and more the incidence in blacks, it is on the rise, it is increasing. Um, we tend to be at higher risk. So it is key, male or female, um, if you are um, someone who is black, African, you need to really adhere to these screening guidelines to make sure you're um, not at risk and you are not um, developing these uh, cancers at a earlier stage in life. Um, to get to the second part of what you were asking, and again, I'm sorry for the um, loss of that friend uh, that uh, didn't survive their uh, cancer, their polar cancer, the treatment really is going to depend on the stage of their colorectal cancer. All right. With colorectal cancer, after it is um, diagnosed and one is deemed to have this, um, this condition, what your team of doctors will do is something called staging. Staging is basically letting us know um, what point uh, this cancer has progressed to. And this is based on a few things. It's based on location, um, tumor size, and if the cancer has metastasized, meaning to spread to different parts of the body. So the different stages um, begin with um, stage zero, that's the earliest stage, and it can progress to stage one, stage two, stage three, and stage four. Stage four is the end stage. That's the later stage of um, colorectal cancer. And that means that at that point, the cancer is pretty much metastasized and spread to different um, areas and um, organ systems in the body. Based on the stage, that really dictates the kind of treatment that one um, may have 
to treat a colorectal cancer. So the treatment modalities can range from a couple of things. Um, it can be uh, surgical excision, it can be chemotherapy, it can be radiation, it can be a combination of all of those things, but it really depends on um, what point your cancer has been diagnosed. Was it in the earlier stages whereby um, we have a lot more um, treatment modalities to help have a better um, rate of survival, or is it at the end stages? We obviously always want to catch these cancers at the very early stages um, of the cancer. Again, that's why it is key to screen. Even if you're not having symptoms, the takeaway is start the screening process um, at the recommended time, which is at the age of 45. All right, so um, let's take a look at this. Uh, so you have the medical um, sector saying that you have the lung cancer, prostate cancer, contributing so much, about 41.9%, if I'm not mistaken, to the colon cancer. And I'd like to find out. So for those who probably would have suffered different kinds of cancer, the colon cancer could actually contribute to having maybe the skin cancer, the lung cancer, prostate cancer, breast cancer. I, I want you to, you know, uh, confirm how valid that statement is and our report is. And secondly, what makes colon cancer, uh, you know, distinct or, you know, different from every kind of cancer that you have, just like I have mentioned, the prostate, the lung cancer, the breast cancer, skin cancer, and what have you? So to answer um, the initial question, um, when you or when one develops a colon cancer, it always has the potential um, to uh, pretty much uh, grow even further and affect other organ systems, what we call uh, metastasis. Meaning that if it's not caught early and we don't find it soon enough, there is that potential for it to spread to the um, lungs, uh, spread to various regions of uh, the body, metastasize to the lymph nodes and various other organ systems. So it can contribute to the development of um, what we call metastases, other areas of the body. So that's something that we need to be aware of. Um, I think when we're um, comparing different cancers, it's kind of a complex, state, uh, complex thing to do you can't just make a statement that one cancer may be uh, potentially worse than um, the other because you have to put things in perspective um, with the clinical picture of the patient and what um, organ system it's affecting and the patient's overall health. With that said, one thing I think that is really key um, and what we need to focus on in any cancer in general is prevention, preventive health. That's something that is not so much focused upon um, in Nigeria. If we have good preventive health metrics and measures and a, um, a strong uh, fortified healthcare system whereby there is this focus on prevention, we are able to, or we should potentially be able to find out, find out um, about the potential of these developments of these cancers in various organ systems at different points in one's life. So all that to say, if we have a focus on prevention and if you are seeing your doctor for your um, annual checkup, your doctor should really be letting you know at what point you should be screened for the different kinds of cancers. So for instance, all women that are at the age of 40 or older should be screened for a mammogram to make sure that there's no issue with breast cancer. In the case for colon cancer, we start the screening for everyone at the age of 45. This guidance really should be dictated by your care team when there's a focus on prevention. If there's, a, if there's no focus on prevention, you get to a point whereby um, a lot of these cancers in general are found at the later stages of the disease process. Hmm. All right, uh, uh, Dr. Okeke Boko, you, you talked about uh, uh, you know, prevention. 
uh, and one of the methods or uh, uh, directives you've given for prevention is to go for screening. And you mentioned the colonoscopy. Now, uh, I'm aware that some persons listening may not uh, know what you mean by colonoscopy. So can you please break down that down for us? And also, um, uh, how often should this be done? You've talked about from the age of 45 upwards, but how often should a colonoscopy be done? You know, is it every two years? Is it once a year? And uh, please tell us. So when um, I'm referring to the colonoscopy, this is pretty much um, a procedure whereby um, a scope, a, a tube with a camera at the end of it, that's the best way to understand it, is um, placed through the bottom of an individual through the rectum and basically the gastroenterologist will visualize the entire colon. So all that means is that this screening method is enabling that doctor to look and visualize through the colon to see if there have been any kind of potential um, growths, abnormal growths, any kind of tumors, any kind of um, cancers that are visualized. How often um, does that need to be done? It all depends on what is found when we do that initial screening colonoscopy. So let's say you do the initial screening colonoscopy at 45 and it's A-OK, -okay. there's nothing that's found on the um, screening colonoscopy, no abnormal um, growth, it looks like a very healthy colon. The next time that one would have to do the colonoscopy would be um, the 10 years later. <laughs> but you would have to basically have your um, regular checkups um, with your doctor, and of course if there were any symptoms that developed in the interim, um, it might have to be sooner than that. But it would be 10 years after the initial screening if the initial colonoscopy were found to be okay. All right, that I'll, all changes. Yeah, please go. I was gonna say, those guidelines change based upon what may or may not be found. So let's say um, that upon screening, um, a certain kind of polyp, an abnormal, um, unusual growth is found. Um, that would change things. If it's something that's able to um, be removed, and um, the pathology report shows a certain form of um, a disease process, it really all depends on um, the time frame um, for when the next uh, screening would be, might be shorter, it might be at a five-year interval, it might be at a three-year interval. It really depends on what is actually found. I, I know I've heard somewhere uh, talk of you know, testing the feces. Is this something uh, that can be done to also check to see if one has uh, colon cancer? So some of the um, tests that you're um, referring to, um, just uh, testing the uh, fecal matter, what we're checking for um, is to see if there's what we call occult blood, evidence of kind of residual blood that is showing up in the um, stool. If that is found in the stool, you can't uh, per se diagnose and state that you now have a colon cancer, but it does allow one to um, understand that there is something going on that is unusual if you do have that occult blood. That would prompt one to have to have that colonoscopy, that screening um, test to visualize the colon to determine um, exactly what is going on in the um, colon. The colonoscopy is pretty much the gold standard in regards to trying to figure out what is going on with your colon health. Um, some of those fecal tests to find um, occult blood, um, those things kind of um, give you, um, it's an indicator to let you know that something is off and you need to have that colonoscopy anyhow to determine exactly what is the problem with the colon health. All right, so um, let's look at it now in a holistic, you know, uh, formal pattern, however you want to put it, uh, the fact that mm -hmm. There's awareness that's going on for colon cancer. So what should generally, uh, you know, people know about? What should one know about whether the, um, you know, the female gender or you have, uh, you know, the male as it is and everyone involved generally as the campaign continues? So the main takeaway is really um, knowing the symptoms. We talked about the red flag um, symptoms and basically getting screened at the appropriate um, age. But with that said, looking at things holistically, you have to make sure that you always adhere to overall healthy lifestyle choices to lower your risk for colon cancer. 
These lifestyle choices that you make will also lower your risk for other illnesses, for other diseases, for other kinds of cancers. So if there's one thing you want to do at this point is really make sure you're adhering to um, a healthier diet. If your diet is high in red meat, processed meats, you want to eliminate that. You really want to um, fortify the kind of diet and the foods that you're eating and make sure that it's enriched with whole grains, with uh, vegetables, with fruits, things that will be good for not only your colon health, but also for other organ systems. You want to make sure that you are actually um, maintaining physical activity on a day-to-day -day basis. Official recommendation, you should be getting at least a minimum of 30 minutes of exercise five days a week, bare minimum. If you're not doing that and you're leading a sedentary lifestyle, that's really a problem that's going to affect your overall health and increase your risk for not only colon cancer, but, only, but also for other illnesses and um, conditions. You so, want to make sure that you also eliminate um, poor lifestyle choices. If you're a smoker, you need to quit. Today's the day to quit. That's going to highly increase your risk of colon cancers, other kinds of cancers, um, and other health conditions. And you want to minimize your alcohol intake. Um, these are all day-to-day -day lifestyle choices that every single person has control over in order to um, basically try to optimize your health and get you in the better path towards um, better colon health and better overall health in general. So, so would you classify this uh, lifestyle choices like you have mentioned as non-pharmaceutical ways of preventing colon cancer? So I'm not referring to any kind of um, pharmaceutical treatment modality to um, get you on the right path. Um, this is kind of something that everyone can do on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay. Um, if you're somebody that has just um, not been uh, physically active or not moving around as much as you have, maybe because uh, of the pandemic, you were indoors all the time, you didn't have the chance to um, exercise. Today is the day to start, really to um, get the body moving, get the heart pumping. Um, there are things that you can do on your own that you don't have to depend on pharmaceuticals or uh, medications to um, optimize your health. Exercise, taking a walk, that's free. You don't have to pay for that. You can just initiate that into your lifestyle. So, so I, talked I talked about non-pharmaceutical. Yes, non-pharmaceutical. So exercising, that's non-pharmaceutical. That's something you have control over um, doing on a day-to-day -day basis. Non-pharmaceutical, adhering to um, proper choices in regards to your um, diet, meaning not going out to um, eat so often, not um, eating a lot of fast foods, not eating a lot of processed foods. These are non-pharmaceutical choices that you can make on a day-to-day -day basis that can really help optimize things. All right, uh, uh, Doc, uh, what, what, what's the outlook for one, you know, diagnosed with, with colon cancer, colorectal cancer, as it were? Um, uh, what are the chances of survival? Is, is there some statistics somewhere or some way to tell, you know, the people um, survive it at a high rate or is it um, really difficult to come out of? Um, so it all depends, again, on the stage of the cancer. So just to give you kind of um, general outlook on things. If the cancer is diagnosed and found at an earlier stage, meaning um, from stage zero to stage four, which is the end stage, if your cancer is diagnosed and taken care of and treated during stage zero, your overall survival is much greater. It's much more improved um, compared to somebody who has been di diagnosed at the end stage, at stage four. Again, that's why we focus on the um, screenings because if you're screened during those um, intervals that we discussed and you're found and you find the colon cancer at the very early stages, your overall um, health outcomes, your overall um, response to treatment, your overall survival is improved when it's found at the early stages. All right, we're hearing from the international um uh, agency for research in cancer that over the next uh, 18 years we'll be having a, a quite astronomical increase in 
in the deaths from the disease. Um, and they're saying that uh, most of the increases are expected to occur in countries uh, with a high human development index. And we know where um, countries that have a high human development index, which is a, a measure of um, uh, how well uh, human development uh, is in these countries in key dimensions like healthy life, long life, and all that. Ah, these countries are in um, uh, the global north, uh, as it were, you know, places like where you are. So is this to say that we in, in the global south or in the developing world or in countries that have a low human development index should worry less about dying from colon cancer? Um, I wouldn't say that um, those in uh, Nigeria or on the African continent should worry um, us. Um, the statistics are showing us that colon cancer, colorectal cancer, it's on the rise um, in blacks, it's on the rise um, in Africans, it's on the rise in um, this part of the world. So we should not um, kind of... Um, forget about the statistics that are showing that there is this kind of um, increased incidence based on race as well. Um, everyone should really maintain high alert and be aware about the possibility of this um, developing throughout the course of your life. Hmm. Everyone is going to be at risk as we all get older. So this isn't something that should really um, be ignored or um, we shouldn't minimize the potential threat to your overall health that this can actually um, become. Okay, so, so let's talk about, you know, uh, at the policy level, uh, what do you think that government should do, you know, to help against the uh, prevention or critical awareness in terms of colon cancer? Um, there needs to really be uh, more funding in the healthcare center, uh, sector. Um, government really needs to focus on making sure that we have strengthened the healthcare system um, in Nigeria. Right now, we're working with a uh, very weak infrastructure when we're talking about healthcare system. There's an issue with overall um, access. Right now, if you um, ask the average Nigerian that is 45 or older, if they've ever gotten a colonoscopy, the chances are the answer is likely going to be they're not going to know um, like the, where they need to go, how they're going to access the colonoscopy, and chances are the likelihood of them getting screened, they're not going to have any kind of quote unquote checkup until they're actually developing um, symptoms. And at that point, when one develops symptoms, that's usually at the later stages of the disease process. All that to say, there needs to really be a focus on fortifying the healthcare system, making sure there's an issue with access to care for all Nigerians, making sure that there's this focus on prevention so that um, they're able to really navigate the healthcare system and understand um, what needs to be done at various points in their life. Uh, this question of policy is very important um, because you've you've raised uh, you've told us that, that the steps to be taken to you know prevent and to screen and you've talked about the colonoscopy mammogram and and all that the stages of treatment uh, um, you know Nigeria you know we live in in uh, uh, in a peculiar environment with a peculiar economic challenges uh, what are what are some of the lessons that you know, you think we can borrow from the part of the world where you find yourself um, in, in terms of giving uh, a healthcare access, you know, in terms of in access to screening and treatment and all that to people who are um, below um, the, the poverty line or people who are not part of those in middle class in the United States of America. We've heard of things like Obamacare and all that from this part of the world. What, what lessons can we on this side learn, especially in terms of government, in terms of policy, to make sure that those who are the base of society can have access to, you know, to the screening and prevention and treatment and all that? So, I mean, at this point, this is, um, this comes, um, this is all chalked up to um, funding at the government level. There just needs to be a um, fundamental restructuring of the healthcare system at this point um, in Nigeria. In regards to access, there are not a lot of um, basically uh, free clinics or places available for Nigerians to get some of these treatments. A lot of things are basically you're paying out of pocket. If you don't have 
the funds and the means to do this, it's almost as if you're stuck or you're trapped in a situation that you can't get out of. I think um, it's not for the uh, people of the country to figure out how we're going to increase the access. It's really on a policy level, it's really on a funding level to make sure those funds are really put into the healthcare center, uh, sector to ensure that there is the possibility of having access to some of these things. But I think the takeaway for um, patients really would be to not ignore the signs and the symptoms. People often wait until things are kind of um, so severe, um, way too late. A lot of people are kind of like these ticking, ticking time bombs waiting to explode in regards to their health. A lot of things that are kind of swept under the rug um, and ignored. So the real takeaway is if you have access to a doctor that you trust, that you can see, you really should have a routine checkup to make sure that you're not at risk for any of um, these issues that we are um, discuss discussing, any of these potential health conditions that can arise at various stages of life. So just don't ignore symptoms that can occur throughout the course of one's life. Yeah. But with that said, we await for the government to really try to restructure healthcare in Nigeria and make it possible for increased access to all Nigerians. All right. So basically, it's down to you. Take personal responsibility for your health uh, while we wait for things to get better. Dr. Nesochi Okeke Boke, fantastic uh, delivery from you. And of course, uh, we're taking a lot away from this. I know viewers as well are uh, taking a lot away from this. She's a health expert and she's joined us live from New York. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you for having me. Have a great morning. You Thank too. You. Wow. Uh, some grim, grim, grim statistics there and uh, very important that uh, people do the right thing uh, to protect themselves and uh, of course go get tested go get screened go do your colonoscopy uh, it's very important especially if you're 45 years and above yeah so we're hoping that you know this actually pass uh, this message has been passed on and everyone will pay attention but generally it's just unfortunate that you know uh, we live in a culture society where we don't pay attention to our health but I'm hoping that we we'll understand the need to be responsible before we call on the government. And that's it this morning on our first segment to we'll take a break. All Things Vinicor will bring you a second conversation right here. Please stay with us.